Optimizing unconventional completions. Plug and perf versus multi-stage unlimited pinpoint fracturing. In today's oil and gas market, operators are striving to optimize unconventional completions to improve financial results and increase resource recovery. But can plug and perf completions, which are almost 90% of unconventional completions, be optimized? Let's see. To optimize a completion design, you have to control critical parameters from one well to the next. Here's what you can control with plug and perf. The propent, how much propent is pumped at each stage, frac fluid design, and the pumping schedule. Unfortunately, you have little or no control over what happens downhole, where the completion touches the rock. You can't control the number of fractures created, or where the fracks are located along the lateral, or how much propent is pumped into each frac. Here's why. Formation breakdown pressures vary widely across a lateral, even between adjacent clusters. These actual breakdown pressures were recorded in four leading basins. The variation makes it impossible for all clusters in a stage to fracture at the same time and take the same amount of propent. So the design for a stage with four perforation clusters might look like this, but the reality is going to look different because the cluster with the lowest breakdown pressure fractures first and other clusters might never be broken down or fully stimulated. This isn't just speculation. Studies using fiber optics, production logs, and downhole video have revealed that more than 30% of clusters contribute very little or nothing to production. So the first plug and perf well might look like this, but the next one could look like this, and the third one like this, and the fourth well will still be different. These completions are not predictable, verifiable, or repeatable, which means they aren't really optimizable. A four-well section will look something like this, with a lot of unstimulated reservoir, leaving reserves behind, probably forever. Yet another big drawback to plug and perf is that you come away with no downhole data to help you understand what happened and how to improve your completion design. So can plug and perf completions be optimized? The answer is no. But plug and perf can sometimes be improved by increasing the number of stages and clusters and pumping a lot more sand. But that still doesn't optimize the completion or the economics. Now let's look at multi-stage unlimited pinpoint fracturing, the optimizable completion. Unlike multi-cluster plug and perf, pinpoint fracturing executes completions one frac at a time in a predictable, verifiable, repeatable process. What you can't control with plug and perf, you can control with pinpoint fracturing. If your pinpoint design looks like this, the reality looks about the same. Your first completion will look a lot like this, with controlled fractures distributed equally along the lateral. And the next completion looks about the same. The third one too, and the fourth. An optimized four-well section is covered with equally spaced fractures of equal propped volume. This repeatable frac network lets you execute and evaluate completion and field development strategies with confidence. We call this controlled optimization. How does multi-stage unlimited pinpoint fracturing deliver controlled optimization? The pinpoint system has two parts. Casing sleeves that are run and cemented as part of the production string when the well is drilled and a coiled tubing frac isolation assembly that operates the sleeves during the frac job. The sleeves match the properties of the host casing and have a full drift inner diameter. The inner sleeve slides down to open frac ports to the formation. The frac isolation assembly comprises mainly a multi-set bridge plug, sleeve locator, and two downhole gauge recorders. The assembly is deployed on coiled tubing to locate and shift individual sleeves and isolate the target zone from the weld bore below. This animation shows a single pinpoint frac stage. First, we locate the sleeve, then we set the bridge plug, Pump pressure shifts the inner barrel down to open the frac ports. The formation breaks down and propet is pumped into the fracture.
Then we unset the bridge plug and move to the next sleeve. Remember that Plug and Perf captures no downhole data? Multi-stage unlimited pinpoint fracturing records pressure and temperature data for each frac. This is our exclusive Trident Precision Gauge Recorder. We run these gauge recorders above and below the isolation bridge plug to measure pressure and temperature at the frac zone and in the well bore below. This chart shows actual downhole pressure and temperature for a single stage. Frac zone pressure, measured by the top gauge, is red. Bottom gauge pressure is black. Frac zone temperature is light blue. And bottom gauge temperature is purple. Frac zone pressure clearly indicates major events during the stage simulation. First, setting the bridge plug to isolate the frac zone from the well bore below. Then, pressure testing the isolation bridge plug in the well bore above the sleeve. Next, shifting the sleeve to open the frac ports. Then, breaking down the formation. And when the frac is away, unsetting the bridge plug, allowing pressure in the well bore to equalize before moving to the next sleeve. Note that the bottom pressure is unaffected by the fracturing pressure. That's how you know there was no communication with the previous stages below. Further confirming complete isolation, the top temperature gauge registers only the cooling effect of the frac fluid above the bridge plug, while the bottom gauge shows only the gradual warm back of the well bore below. This chart for a single stage combines gauge data with all the surface frac data to give you a clear picture of how the frac progressed as sand concentration was increased. All that data is analyzed by NCS multi-stage frac engineers as part of our exclusive fractural completion evaluation. The engineers look for communication between stages, cement issues, indications of natural fracturing, fracture complexity, prop and bridging, and more. They then prepare a post-completion report that helps you optimize stage spacing to maximize reservoir connectivity, calibrate formation properties for more accurate frac modeling, and better estimate effective reservoir permeability to optimize well spacing. Finally, accurate downhole temperatures help you optimize cross-linkers and breakers. So, can multi-stage unlimited pinpoint fracturing be optimized? The answer is yes. But is controlled optimization practical? The answer is still yes. Here are a couple of brief examples. This operator began with 30 stages spaced at 142 feet. Gauge data showed there was no communication between stages, so they tightened spacing to less than 100 feet and increased the number of stages to more than 80. Still no communication. By the ninth well, they were placing 97 stages, more than three times what they started with, at 72 foot spacing, half of what they started with. Pinpoint completions plus measured downhole data accelerated their learning curve, leading to faster optimization. Another operator wanted to optimize well economics. They first used an eight stage completion design with open hole packers and ball drop sleeves. Then they tested cemented liners combined with multi-stage unlimited pinpoint fracturing. They started with 16 stages per well and got a small increase in net present value. After experimenting with other stage counts, they standardized on 25 stages and raised per well NPV to more than 1.7 times the initial value. At the same time, EUR improved from 125,000 barrels to 250,000 barrels, leading to a significant increase in booked reserves. In conclusion, NCS multi-stage pinpoint completions are predictable, verifiable, repeatable, and optimizable. Plug and perf completions are not.